Hello everyone. Thanks for joining my community session. I'm Tia Pope, a faculty research scientist at the Georgia Institute of Technology within the College of Computing in partnership with the Center for Health Analytics and Informatics or the CHI team and the Georgia CTSA. Today I would like to share with you the value of OMOP on fire. We will start with OMOP, what it is, I'll talk a little bit about FIRE and how these two technologies were combined to make OMOP on FIRE. I'll quickly review the architecture and from there, I'll share with you an analytics use case. I'll talk about some upcoming features we hope to have and how you can contribute to the continuous improvement of OMOP on FIRE. So let's jump right in. So what is OMOP? OMOP is a common data model which is used to unify and standardize the representation of data from various data sources. OMOP was created to standardize a structure that enables the generation of reproducible evidence. And as you can see from the diagram, OMOP CDM takes in heterogeneous data types like claims, EMR, survey, and registry data. What's even more special about this model is that it's not US specific, so it makes it easier to collaborate in international research studies. For example, say if you have, say, five different databases that you would like to collectively analyze, but because the data isn't uniformed, you would have to write out the code to parse the data from each of them. This makes it hard to ask simple questions and even retrieve answers from these data sets. By pulling together data into a common data model, it enables you to write very few queries to get what you need. There are various common data models out there, but we've chosen OMOP due to its versatility, as well as its reputation within the analytics and research spaces. So far, you may have learned a lot about FHIR here at Dev Days, but just in case you missed it, FHIR is a next generation standard for health data exchange. You may have also learned how FHIR has become part of ONC's interoperability roadmap, so it's a very important tool to know. It leverages REST and has strong documentation that provides clear implementation standards and guidelines. If you get a chance, I encourage you to check out FHIR's various resources, which make it easier to package and exchange health data. Although FHIR is great for many things, alone, FHIR is not the ideal tool for pulling together data on cohorts of patients. For example, the overhead processing for FHIR to download data on, say, a group of 300 patients who all have the same medical condition could impact the EHR production performance. OMOP is a powerful tool built for population level analytics and predictive modeling. FHIR works best by pulling a single patient's data. That's because FHIR is oriented around patient level processes such as the delivery of information and data-driven decision support. By combining these two environments, we provide a research and development platform that supports the continuum from data science to application development. And this is the value of OMOP on FHIRE. Furthermore, moving data between FHIRE and OMOP allows users to translate data from provider and patient applications into structured data repositories. It also allows users to transform individual patient data into a form that say receptive to scoring by OMOP predictive models. Moving data between OMOP and FHIR allows users to turn a clinical data warehouse into a transactional server capable of interacting with diverse applications. You can call this analytics as a service. Here is a high level overview of what OMOP on FHIR's environment looks like. One component is your FHIR server that hosts your FHIR data. The data can come from, say, an API endpoint, files, or a bulk FHIR. You have your OMOP database, which is up to the user. However, we currently support Postgres, which is usually compatible for most use cases. Then you have what I call the backbone, or the data converter, which is listed on this diagram as the OMOP on FHIR. OMOP on FHIRE supports bidirectional read and write translation between OMOP version 5.1 and FHIRE DSTU2 and STU3. We are currently in the process of upgrading these capabilities, which I will share more about shortly. OMOP on FHIRE is easy to deploy. It includes a useful data set to test. 
It supports Aragonaut resources and various mappings between FIRE and OMOP. We have also successfully integrated Smart on Fire with OMOP on Fire to make OMOP on Smart on Fire. Smart on Fire is an API used to write applications that run anywhere within a healthcare system. It has an open architecture with EHR plugins. It provides ease of access and security to applications and has been or become the base or a backbone for many cloud services such as Microsoft Azure, which you've probably been exposed to during a conference, uh, Google Cloud, as well as Apple's personal health, health record. By combining SMART and OMOP, uh, this creates an even more powerful environment for building out analytics-based tools. For those of you who are interested in how the mappings between FIRE and OMOP are structured, we provided a publicly available Google spreadsheet for your viewing. Please keep in mind that there are only um, updates based off funding, so we do not have all possible mappings in this spreadsheet. But you can check this out using the short link above. So here's a use case um, based on real-time patient level predictions. We built a general framework over the Odyssey patient level prediction package using an API for predictive analytics model. When we use this model to make risk predictions for individual patients within a precision medicine decision support tool with the ability to toggle off and on potential drugs or treatments as a means of aiding medical practitioners in this decision making. With this, obviously, we needed to consider the needs to be given to the quality of the model itself as that affects the quality of the predictions as well as the inability of the model to predict for new treatments that are not available in the training data. This is a very data and analytics analytics based project to which I just provided a bit of background for context on how robust tools can be built around and using OMOP on fire. As you can see OMOP on fire served as the base uh, for this particular project where FIRE is used to pull in EHR data and convert it to OMOP's data schema. From there, OMOP takes in and exchanges data from various sources to support the processing needed to build these predictions. This is just one example of what could be done with OMOP on FIRE. You can check out the community talk called the Public Health Automated Case Event Reporting, or PACER, Platform for Sexually Transmitted Infections Using FIRE, which also takes advantage of OMOP on fire. This was a talk that happened a couple of days before. However, if you have any special projects or use cases that you would like to share, then feel free to connect with us. Now let's talk about the new features coming for OMOP on fire. By the end of the summer, we're anticipating on having OMOP version 5.3 publicly available, as well as fire release 4. This would include some of the cross mappings amongst the new versions as well as the old. Next, since our current versions, versions of OMOP on Fire only supports bi-directional read and write capabilities with JPA, we're working on providing SQL render as an option to make it easier to integrate with cloud environments. So far, we've managed to build one direction from Fire to OMOP, as you can see in the diagram. So we're working towards the counter direction as we speak. For those of you unfamiliar with SQL Render, it's a R package in Java library for translating different SQL dialects. With JPA alone, we do not have the SQL statement construction to do this translation in the same way. So we're building it out ourselves and we're pretty excited about it. Outside of our summer goals, we're also working on a new interactive site for OMOP on Fire, which would include updated documentation, guided tutorials, a training schedule, as well as updates on new features and a place to request new features. Most importantly, we're looking forward to ways to support you. So let us know how we may help. Feel free to stay connected to us and myself after Dev Days. If you would like to participate as a contributor, please email me at tiapope at guytech.edu. You can also fork our repo and submit a pull request at the links provided. You can make a feature request, report an issue, or even subscribe to our mailing list using the following bit.ly bit short link here. 
And as I conclude, I would like to give a shout out to my team, my young Choi, Saul, Crumpton, John Duke, Michael Riley, and Richard Starr for making this happen. Thank you so much for your time and I look forward to your questions.